And this video is actually going to start out with something slightly unrelated to the rest of it, just because I missed it in the last one. Um, but that's okay. So something a little bit more extended with our sum and difference formulas. Um, sine a equals 4 fifths. Cosine b equals 8 over 17. And we're told, let me start highlighting some things, we're told that a is obtuse and b is acute. And we want to find sine of a plus b. There's a lot going on here. So let's start to pick it apart. Well, sine of a is 4 fifths, so let's maybe start by drawing that. I'm going to draw it however I want. I'll deal with positives and negatives in a minute. That's a terrible looking right triangle, but for all intents and purposes, it's a right triangle. So this is angle A. Its opposite side is 4 and adjacent side is 5. Cosine B is 8 over 17. So again, let me just draw this out real quick. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not even close to being a right triangle, but that's okay for now. And its adjacent side is 8 and hypotenuse is 17. Where A is obtuse and B is acute. So, well, if A is obtuse, that means it's in quadrant 2. And if B is acute, then it is in quadrant 1. And ultimately, my goal here is to find sine of A plus B. And again, this is where your prior knowledge needs to kick in and maybe a little bit of your problem-solving skills need to kick in. One thing I know about sine of A plus B is that it can be expressed this way, right? using my sum formula. So sine A, sine B. So let's figure out what I know. Let's figure out what I don't know. And then let's try to just apply what I need to do to the problem, see what I can kind of apply my information that I find out along the way. So sine of A, we know sine of A. Sine of A is 4 fifths. And we know cosine B, cosine B is 8 over 17. What we don't know is cosine A, and what we don't know is sine of B. But we have enough information to figure that out, right? We know we have a right triangle, and I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So by the Pythagorean theorem, this missing side is 3. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, This missing side in the red triangle is going to be 15. Again, that's by the Pythagorean theorem. And now we have our information, right? So we know that cosine of A is 3 fifths. And we know that sine of B is 15 over 17. And well, now I have everything I need, right? I've got all the parts that I need. I can just multiply these all together. Let's see, 5 times 17 is 85. Uh, 4 times 8 is 32, plus 45. So I get 77 over 85, and I don't believe that that simplifies. So there's my value of sine of A plus B. And it's, it's a good example of a problem that looks daunting and intimidating. And there's a lot of numbers and symbols and things going on. But when you break it apart, it really isn't much more to it than using right triangles and using Sokotoa and just applying it and extending that problem solving skills. Let's move on to kind of the heart of this video, which is using these identities for proof. Proving trigonometric identities or any sort of statement like this is really just a form of direct proof. Right? Our goal is to transform the left-hand side into the right-hand side. So some tips. When you're dealing with proof with trig functions, we should look for a couple opportunities. One of those opportunities is to factor or to add fractions. Those are two key things that you may want to try to do in these kinds of proofs. 
we also want to use our um, use our identities right we learned all of these identities for a reason we should use them anywhere you can right if you see like a sine squared maybe that's a hint that you need to use a Pythagorean identity if you see a tangent maybe that's an, a hint that you need to use a quotient identity um, anywhere you see combinations like that anything that jumps out at you trust your gut follow your gut when in doubt if you don't know where to move at all convert everything to sine and to cosine and see where that takes you right sine and cosine are the building blocks for all of these trig functions and if you're ever lost go back to your roots right go back to the basics go back to square one turn everything into sine and cosine great example of that is this proof right here prove that tangent plus cotangent equals secant times cosecant and maybe your first thought is that doesn't look possible at all remember that with proof generally we try not to work with both sides at the same time so we're just going to start with our left hand side and again there's really nowhere for me to go with this immediately um, i can't really use any identities probably yet uh, there's nothing to factor there are no fractions to add so let's just turn everything into sine and cosine well, by my quotient identities, right, we learned that sine over cosine is equal to tangent. Right, we learned that sine over cosine is equal to tangent. So maybe that's one substitution I can make. And we also learned that following that same logic, the other quotient identity that we have is that cosine over sine is equal to cotangent. So here's another substitution we can make. And then again, we look back at our kind of three tips. And now I have fractions to add. So let's add our fractions. Sorry, this shouldn't be over cotangent, this should be over cosine. So I'm going to find a common denominator, and when in doubt, your common denominator is just the product of your two denominators, so cosine times sine. Well, what do I have to do to cosine to get to my denominator? I multiplied by sine, so I'm going to do the same thing on the top of that fraction. Likewise, I need to multiply by cosine in this second fraction. And now we're here. And again, we look back at our three tips and we don't really have any fa thing to factor and we don't really have any fractions to add anymore, but we do have an identity that we can use, right? We know that this sine squared plus cosine squared, I said that's fundamental, right? That's super important. It's a Pythagorean identity. We know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. So we can just replace this with one. I have one over cosine sine. And anytime I see a one over, well, that's kind of a hint that we have a reciprocal here. So let's use our reciprocal identities. Well, one over cosine is secant, and one over sine is cosecant. And that's my left-hand side and I'm done with this proof. You might be want, left wondering, I'm just gonna kind of write in my those reciprocal identities here just to keep track of them. You might be wondering how I was able to kind of just fly through that and a lot of it is I'm just used to looking for these things now, right? It, a lot of it is just frankly that it comes with practice. It comes with just drilling these identities, getting used to using them, so one thing you can always do, and one thing you should always do, is practice, practice, practice. Review these identities. Yes, you have a formula sheet in front of you, but don't waste time searching through the formula sheet or the formula booklet to get your answer. Some of these you should know, right? In addition to those important trig values, you should know sine squared plus cosine squared. You should know your reciprocals. You should know your quotients. Sum and difference, double angle, those I still have to look up from time to time, and I would kind of expect you to need to do that too. But these, you know, your quotient identities, your Pythagorean identities, at least this first one here, 
your reciprocal identities, those you need to know like your times tables. Like I said before, right? this is crucial. This part is crucial for trig and it's gonna be super important when we get into equation solving next. So really practice, really become one with your identities. Really get used to using these and practicing with them.